Okay, so here is a problem uh, that gives us a long cylinder, a non-conducting cylinder with a charge density of 90 nanocoulombs per cubic meter. That's the rho that's given. And the rod's radius is given uh, 2 centimeters. And then they have, um, they've given us a point P, which is 4 centimeters away from the axis. And they want us to calculate the magnitude of the potential difference of point A and point P. So A is a point on the surface that's 2 centimeters from the axis and P is, you know, uh, 4 centimeters from the axis, right? So, so when I look at this problem, immediately in my mind, I have Gauss's law in my mind that would give me the electric field. Electric field would be radially outwards in all different directions. And I also remember that uh, potential will drop in the direction of the electric field. So A will be at a higher potential compared to P. Okay. So uh, anyway, so, so my first thing should be to get the electric field. And once I get the electric field, I can integrate it uh, to get the potential difference. Right. So just a quick thing, since we have done this many, many times, uh, I just want to uh, quickly um, use Gauss's law and calculate the electric field at any point um, R greater than R, right? The little R greater than capital R. So if I want the potential, not potential, electric field at point P or at any R for that matter, right? I choose a Gaussian surface that goes through this. So this is all the old stuff, right? So I choose a Gaussian surface and um, I apply Gauss's law to this. So I'll say, you know, integral uh, e dot dA is Q in by epsilon naught uh, through the surface. And the flux is all through the curved surface area. So it's E times 2 pi R L, where L is the length of this cylinder. And the charge inside is this much charge. So that's going to be rho times the volume, uh, which is pi R squared times L, uh, divided by epsilon naught. Right. So the L goes off, uh, the pi goes off, and I'll have my electric field to be rho divided by 2 epsilon naught times r squared divided by little r, right? This is for r greater than r. Actually, greater than or equal to r, this will be fine, right? So, so now that I have that expression uh, for the electric field, right? I can I can use that to to figure out the electric potential. So um, I'll bring this down here. So I, I need to substitute for the electric field, right? Um, so when I do the integral, I've got the electric field, of course, which is this way, and then you have the dl vector, right? And the dl vector, I'm also moving from a to p, so that's the dl vector, uh, which is in the same direction. You see, so so when I do this, I end up having delta V, that's Vp minus Va is integral. Uh, e, we just showed it's rho over 2 epsilon naught R squared divided by R, and it's in the radially outward direction, R hat, uh, dotted with dl, dl the same as dr, and that's also in the radially outward direction, right? And I'm going from uh, point A to point P, um, point A to point P. So th that's the radius at those points. And R hat dot R hat, those are unit vectors. So that's just equal to 1. And so if I simplify it further, negative rho over 2 epsilon naught, R squared is a constant as well. I have integral dr over R, right? Uh, which is natural log of R. And if I have to substitute, uh, this is radius at point A and this is radius at point P, right? Radius at point A is 2 centimeters at so 0 0.02 meters. At point P, it's 0 0.04 meters, right? So integral dr over R will just give me natural log of R. And that's to be evaluated between 0 0.02 to 0 0.04. You see, the rest is just math, substituting everything. So, so this is uh, rho, which is 90 nanocoulombs per 
cubic meters um, SI units divided by 2 times epsilon naught 8.85 times 10 to the negative 12 coulomb squared per newton meter squared and then the radius is 0 0.02 meters squared and then I have natural log of 0 0.04 minus natural log of 0 0.02 I can simplify it if I want, or I can just substitute things. You know, this this would, would be, I could simplify it as natural log of 0 0.04 divided by 0 0.02, which is really natural log of 2, right? So, so all of this multiplied by natural log of 2. So when I calculate that, um, I end up getting Vp minus Va uh, will come out to be a negative uh, 1.4097 volts or rounded to um, actually two significant figures, I guess. That's what I should have rounded it to because everything is given in two significant figures. So I could just say it's 1.4 volts, right? Yeah, so the answer would be 1.4 volts.